Hey friends, Patrick here and what I want to show you today is not really a flaw in Blazor SSR static server side rendering, but it definitely is some kind of pitfall where many devs, including me, fall into from time to time. And sorry, I'm speaking a bit nasally, na nasal. I have a nasty cold, but still, this is important. So let's talk about that. So what I did here is, and it's actually about using a form and editing and not editing. Well, yeah, editing and updating or even creating an entity, whatever it is, using static server-side rendering with Blazor. This is something where you really have to be very, very careful because let's just have a look at what I've done here. This is r a really simple example, nothing for real-world application, actually. I've got a Blazor server web app here. So web sockets, you can see it here already. If you know that render mode is interactive server, but uh, no pre-rendering here. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to demonstrate updating and creating a game character with a certain name and a level. That's pretty much it. And we see the output then in the terminal. And as you can see here, I added a console write line in the on initialized async method and in the on parameters set async method because this will be important. So you see uh, the order of when stuff is called. And then the uh, final thing here in the handle submit. So we have an, an update and an add form here with the handle submit method. I think you know this when you're watching this video. And then here we write what actually is happening, right? We update or created a character with a certain name and a certain level. And uh, well, then we uh, just continue with our application. Now, regarding the code, the only thing we've got here is a game character, again, with an ID, a name and a level. This stuff is simulated, so no database, nothing like that in there, just a static list of game characters. We uh, change the title depending on when we want to edit or create a game character. Again, we have the edit form here with our character model, then the handle submit method, and we have an input text field to bind the character name and also bind the character level with an input number field using bootstrap classes here just to make it a tiny bit more, well, not that terrible regarding the looks. And then, of course, a submit a button. And again, depending on if this is an update or creating a new character, we change the text. And we uh, know if this is an update or adding or creating a new character by the URL here. So if we just have the uh, base URL, then this is creating a character because we got no ID provided, right? But if we have an ID here in the URL, then we know, okay, this might be an update. So we first have to get the character from a character list. And the character list here, you see it again, this is a static list of characters. ID1 name Cassian level is one. Then we have the, uh, again, our model for the edit form, but in the on parameter set method, then if we have a character ID, then we set this uh, character, right? Maybe I can, uh, I prepare this without the, the zooming in, but then I zoom in and I see that the lines may be a bit too long, so I have to scroll horizontally. But anyways, I think you get the idea. So here now we check, okay, if there is a character with a certain ID, then we return this, set this character there. Otherwise, we create a new character or a new instance. And if you have no value for the character ID, then we create a new instance of the character. And then again, handle submit, we... Uh, either update the character, this means, um, well, it is already changed when, when we do this here because of the static uh, nature here of the list and the binding of the values. I think you get the idea by now. And if this character is new, then we uh, again simulate increasing the ID and add the character to the list. Uh, long story short, I think you get again the idea of this example here. And we start with server, Blazor server, because this is really straightforward how this works. When we restart the application now and have a look here, this is what I wanted. So here, this is now the base URL, right? Again, sorry for, uh, uh, well, because of zooming in here, we do not really see the URL, but this is no ID is given here. So it says create a game character. And here you see the output, the uninitialized async was called, and then the on parameter set async was called. And then, for instance, we can create a character like Mayfeld, 
level is two, let's say we hit create and you can see character created Mayfeld level two. The ID now should be two, right? Because we only had uh, a one character first in the list. So when I put ID one here, we see this is Cassian with level one. You see on initialized async was called and parameter set as well. Edit game character. So we can now, for instance, change the level to 10, update the character. This is the result. We can reload this and we still see the same values. But now what about ID two here? This is our character Mayfeld with level two. Again, we can update. Always have a look at the at the terminal, please, because now you see, okay, here's the update. And again, we can reload the page. We see the uninitialized parameter set. I think by now, pretty straightforward, right? This just works as you're used to it. WebAssembly is a little bit different here. There you would see the output in the uh, console of the developer tools in Chrome, for instance, right? So a bit different, but I just want to focus on server and then also SSR, meaning static server side rendering, because here now we have a WebSocket connection, all right? For all the interactivity stuff, we have the button here that works with WebSockets and so on. But now what about SSR? Because this is really attractive, Blazor SSR, the brand new stuff with .NET 8. But handling forms and handling updates just works differently. I talked about that before in a video and also, of course, in the .NET Web Academy. But I think I did not go deep enough here on YouTube. And I want to show you now what is actually happening. Meaning when I remove the render mode, just like that, then automatically this is not Blazor server with WebSockets anymore. This is now static server side rendering. And I wanted together with you just uh, observe what is happening here. So when we now restart the application, see it here on initialized async on parameter set. So far, everything's nice. We can, of course, add uh, the ID here, for instance, we get our character. Perfect. But now what happens if I just want to update the character? Post request does not specify which form is being submitted. Okay, so this is the first thing we have to pay attention to here. Hope this is correct English. So we have to, when I find Visual Studio, we have to set the form name and also an attribute to the, uh, to the character here. So first thing, form name is, for instance, the game character editor, something like that. And then here we have to set an attribute, meaning this would be supply parameter from form. You can also set a name here when you have several forms on or in your web application. These things have to match, but for our example, this is enough. And this thing here, then the character has to be a property, all right? You cannot set a private game character uh, like that, for instance. This would not work. You see here the error message. Attribute supply parameter from form is not valid on this declaration type. It is only valid on property in the blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Oh my gosh, this code is great. <clears throat> All right, and that's why uh, the character is also lowercase because I started uh, with not using a property here, but this is not important for now. So we have supply parameter from form and we have the game character. Now, Pay attention. We see here this character property and we initialize it directly with setting a new character. So giving this thing a new instance of a game character. This is important. And later then in the uh, on parameter set async, we say when we have a character ID, we set the character to this new game, uh, to this character we find in the list. Otherwise, again, new character. This is a bit redundant here, right? So this thing and this thing, but you will see how we have to change that uh, with SSR in a minute. So let's just restart the application and see how this application now behaves. So here, again, I want to get Cassian. Now I want to set the uh, level to two. And I'll pay attention here to the output. I say update character. What the heck was that? Again, uninitialized async and then on parameter set. And then we see character updated, Cassian, Cassian level one. Let's reload, yeah, continue. Same thing. And, and let me just uh, hit return here. So I want to get the data again. But you see, 
still level is one and not two. So our change did not work. Even worse, in my opinion, is when you just want to create a character like that. Again, we initialized it with these values, string empty, level is zero. Again, we want to just add Mayfield here, for instance, with level 10, create the character. And now a character was created with no name and level is zero. And when I uh, now try to access this character, I don't really know, is this is this really the new one? So where, where did we land here in our code, right? Did we, uh, Little Studio here, did we get here? Or here now what's the big problem here you see it in the output that before the character is created or updated the page is reloaded again and this is the nature of static server-side rendering when we submit our form because with static server-side rendering in blazor and dotnet 8 this is a typical html form and in this form we make a post request so this is totally different from Blazor Server with WebSockets or even WebAssembly where you make a, a web API call, in essence, usually with a controller or a minimal API, whatever it is. But here now, this is server-side rendered, meaning that the whole page is first rendered on the server and after rendering, the form is submitted. And I know this is so strange and so confusing and it took me a while to get this and every single time when i build something with blazor ssr again i have to remember that and think a bit differently but there's an easy fix for that and <clears throat> the fix looks like that the very first thing you would have to do is make this thing nullable and you see already actually here in the form what i did is I, I ask if the character is not null and only in that case I show this edit form because the problem is when I remove this then Blazor is telling me wait a sec this 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 cannot be actually well usually Blazor's up here you see it the reference of a possible null reference and uh, maybe I'm remembering it not correctly but this doesn't work so the edit form wants a, a model that cannot be null. When I run this now, let's just have a look. Okay, still works. This is interesting. But I had, wait, I had or ran into lots of trouble actually with uh, game characters that are, or objects in essence that are null. Let me just return here maybe. And uh, I'll just put that here just for this little test we restart the application yes this is what i meant edit form requires either a model parameter or an edit context parameter please provide one of these and here we can see yeah this is the same thing in a sense so <clears throat> the problem here really is page load is done but the uh, character is still null and this does not work so if you do not provide a character in this specific case in the uninitialized or in the on parameter set async so when the component is finished rendering then you run into trouble so this is why you typically want to add this thing here come on shortcuts not working today so when we now restart the application this is actually more than i wanted to show you see create game character right so now you would have to maybe add an else case here where you then say loading character something like that right and here we could simulate with task delay and so on that the character is currently loading so anyways this is just the uh, the null case so let me just remove that again okay now shortcuts are working again great so here again character if the character is not null only then we show the edit form and then here now you would think okay we start with the character that is null all right, the object is null. But then here we check, well, do we have an ID? Then we set the character with the character with the provided ID. Otherwise, we just initialize the character with a game character. Great. So let's just do it like that. Fix is, is here, right? Hmm, let's see. So now again, I want to create Mayfeld here with a level 10. We create the character. Again, not working. Now, what about the update? So here now. Cassian, now level two, maybe update the character. Also not working. 
because again the uninitialized async and the unparameter set async is called first or they are called first now let's focus on the parameter set async what is actually happening here again the page is rendered on the server first and afterwards the submit of the form is handled so in the unparameter set async again we check is the character uh, do we have an id then we set the character with the character by the given id this means when we enter something in our edit form the uh, whole binding stuff here works but still we enter the page in the on parameter set async this means that we actually overwrite the character because here we say okay the character is the character with the given id from our list and when we uh in the creating case then we say well the character is just a new character so everything we did before is overridden and that's where this null case comes in. There's this beautiful new, well, new, it's not that new actually, but this null coalescing, what's the name? Null coalescing assignment, null coalescing assignment operator here. This thing now, pretty much the same thing as if character is null, Jesus, null, then do something here, otherwise do nothing. So this really means if the character is null, then we set the character, if not, we do nothing. And this is the uh, main confusing part. We are, again, rendering the page on the server. We entered some data. This data is in our form, also on the server. So character is not null anymore, right? It was set either by this thing here or by this thing. Then we changed the data and then the page is rendered again, the data is provided. So now when we enter the on parameter set async, our app knows, okay, this character is not null anymore. I don't do anything here, just leave the character alone. And then after that, the handle submit is called and we can create or update our character. All right, so let's just restart the application, hopefully for a last, for the last time. And uh, now we just enter it without the id here there this is what i wanted let me just again restart it all right restart it again just to make sure now we are again here in the uh, base on the base route we create a new game character may felt with id 10 for instance we hit return and now this works again on initialized and on parameter set async is called but now they know okay the character is not null anymore so don't do anything to the actual object and now call the handle submit and as you can see we've got Mayfeld with level 10 and when we now for instance enter uh, id 2 again we see Mayfeld here we can update the character and we see that level 11 was used here and same thing for Cassian of course we I mean, now hit uh, or choose level 2 we also see that level 2 is used to update Cassian so Long story short, pay attention when you're using Blazor SSR and the form. I hope you learned something, guys. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, put them in the comments. I read all of them, but I can't answer all of them because sometimes there's a lot of stuff to do. And uh, yeah, again, thank you very much for hitting the like button, maybe subscribing to my channel. This helps making all these videos. Thank you so much to all my patrons for all your support. Again, sorry for my cold heart with two little kids and the kindergarten you get all the well all the nasty stuff you can get from kindergarten but anyways thank you very much for watching and i hope i see you next time take care